everybody. My name is Leah Gropo. I'm one of the dietitians at Stanford Healthcare, um, and I have the pleasure to introduce you all to Elaine Hahn. She's one of our registered dietitian nutritionists and certified diabetes educators at Stanford Healthcare. She received her graduate degree in clinical nutrition at New York University. She works at the Stanford Emeryville Multidisciplinary Clinic and Stanford Coordinated Care Clinic in Palo Alto. She provides one-on-one -on -one care for her patients, tailoring their needs to their specific medical condi conditions, and also teaches classes in diabetes education and intuitive eating. She's a proud contributor to gastroenterology books and is an active member of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Um, you all are in for such um, a great Thursday. Elaine is um, amazing, and I just know she has so many great healthy tips for us all, um, and really going to help um, get us excited to use our Instapot. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat box, or you can send um, put them in the q and I'm going to be monitoring both, and I can interject um, Elaine with your questions as we go. So without further ado, Elaine. Yay. Thank you so much, Leah, for the introduction. Um, if you are new to the Instapot community, welcome. It sounds like a lot of you actually have an Instapot, but some of you might be um, needing a little bit of inspiration. Um, this pressure cooker has really made cooking so much easier for me, and it is the star of my kitchen. Um, this sits on the counter all the time because I'm always using it. And today I am super excited to share three of my favorite go-to recipes that I love to use for my family. And each of the recipes take no more than five minutes to prep. And the rest of the time, it's actually letting the Instapot do its magic. So um, the Instapot's gonna do its cooking. So today I'm gonna share with you three of my recipes. The first one being steel cut oatmeal, the second one being spaghetti squash, and the third one being chicken Parmesan. So I have three Instapots uh, to use so that I'm not taking up two hours of your time, but I'm gonna to try to show you each of the recipes in this Instapot um, and um, yeah. Um, okay, first I'm gonna start with the steel cut oatmeal. For the steel cut oatmeal, what you're first going to need um, would be the oats and also liquid. One thing I just want to share with you too that maybe you might not know that's really cool is when you use the lid, you can actually put it and let it sit right here so it doesn't take up any extra counter space um, because sometimes um, this is what I thought you had to do, but you can just put it here in the lid and it's out of your way. So what I do is I put in one cup of steel cut oats, and then you put in three cups of the liquid of your choice. I use water because one of my girls actually has a milk allergy. Um, and so when I make this, it's the entire batch is for the whole family. So my other daughter who doesn't have a milk allergy, I just put a splash of milk at, in her bowl at the very end when everything's fully cooked. But when you do it with water, um, the texture still comes out really nice and creamy. So no problem there. So this is already measured out to three cups. I have the six quart Instapot, so I can actually double up on this recipe. So I could do two cups of the oats and six cups of the liquid. If you have the um, eight quart Instapot too, you can still do that. I'm not sure if the three quart Instapot will actually hold the capacity, but if you have this one, I know you can double up on the recipe for sure. So the next thing you're going to do, right? You have your oats and you have your water or liquid. You're just gonna close the Instapot. I'm gonna show you something right here that's really important. You need to make sure every time you cook, you need to make sure that this um, steaming valve right here is going to be in the sealing position. There's a sealing and a venting posi uh, position. If it's on venting, it will never pressurize. And so you're not going to have it cook. So make sure that you always have it in the, um, the, the sealing position. The other thing that you're going to notice too is that you have a silver pin right here. That, um, that silver pin uh, will pop up when your Instapot is fully pressurized. And that's when you know that the cooking time is going to start. 
Right now, it's not popped up because it hasn't pressurized yet. So I'm going to show you next how you cook this. Okay, I'm going to have to. I am going to move this so you can see my. Okay, so we put the oats and the liquid in. The next thing you're going to do is press manual and you actually want it to cook for four minutes, just like that. And then that's all you need to do. Um, when it is going to come to pressure, it's actually going to change to say on. So right now you're going to see that it says on. And when it's coming to pressure, which takes five to 10 minutes, um, it's going to just say on. But once it's fully pressurized and that pin pops up, that's when the four minute countdown is going to start. So I'll say four, three, two, one. So while I know that a four minute cook time sounds like extremely fast, the entire process takes closer to 30 minutes. When you take into account the five to 10 minutes it takes to pressurize, the four minutes it takes to cook, and we actually need about 20 minutes for it to naturally release. So during the natural release, the Instapot is going to slowly release the pressure while the oats are still cooking and um, it's absorbing, absorbing the liquid. So using your Instapot isn't really that much faster, but the true benefit is that it's totally hands off. So as you can just see, it took me less than one minute to put everything in here, but you don't need to check in on the oats. You don't need to stir it. Um, the entire cooking part is now, you have to just let the Instapot do its work. So you can forget about the oats in the Instapot for even like an hour or two, and your food is still going to taste delicious. So you don't have to worry about it. Okay, so I'm gonna move my thing back up here. Okay, so um, why am I showing you how to cook oatmeal? So the oatmeal is considered um, a high fiber food. And when it comes to carbohydrates and keeping your blood sugar stable, fiber is super important. So I wanna ask Leah, can you open the po first polling question? I wanna ask the audience. So the, um, the polling question that should be popping up um, is how much fiber is recommended per day for adults? Um, can I just make sure that, can you guys see the, okay, perfect. I see the polling question right now. Okay, so in, when it comes to how much fiber is recommended per day for adults, is it A, 10 to 15 grams, B, 25 to 38 grams per day, or is it, 40 to 50 grams of fiber per day. I'll give it a couple more seconds. Uh, I think we have a couple more people who, have, who need to vote. Don't be shy. Okay, Leah, can we, um, let's see. Yeah. yeah, so how much fiber is recommended per day for adults? 8% of you said 10 to 15 grams, 80% of you said 25 to 38 grams, 12% of you said 40 to 50 grams. Okay, so let, thank you, Leah, for doing that. Um, it looks like we just have a very smart audience here because you guys got the answer right. 25 to 38 grams of fiber is what's recommended for healthy adults. Um, and really fiber is very beneficial when it comes to diabetes management. Um, it slows the absorption of sugar into the bloodstream and ultimately it helps with blood sugar control. Oatmeal has um, soluble fiber and that can also help lower your LDL cholesterol. And it definitely can keep you feeling regular with your bowel movements. And it also provides satiety. It keeps you feeling full. Um, so in, especially if you are trying to um, just maintain your weight too. Um, are we able to share the results or um, close out the poll? Let me see. Okay, cool. So we just shared the results. I'm going to close out the poll right now. Okay. 
So the way that um, I suggest that you try to aim for your goal of maybe 25 grams of fiber a day is, you know, if you eat three meals a day and two snacks, um, if you aim for about five or six grams of fiber every time you eat, then you'll be able to get close to your goal amount. Um, so with this oatmeal recipe right here, with that one cup of oats, it's a serving of four. So each serving that um, is in here, it is packed with about 26 grams of carbohydrates, four grams of fiber and six grams of protein. So lots of fiber in here already. Um, one other polling question I have next is, um, um, Leah, can you launch the next question? because I often get questions about oatmeal, steel cut oats versus rolled oats. Um, what is the nutrition difference? Um, is steel cut oats, um, does that have less carbohydrates? Do rolled oats have less carbohydrates or there's no difference in the nutrition? I'll give it a couple, I'll give it a little bit of time. So we okay, get to share the results. What's the nutrition difference between steel cut oats and rolled oats? 38% of you said steel cut oats have less carbohydrates. 0% of you said rolled oats have less carbohydrates. And 62% of you said no difference in nutrition. Mm, so this is almost like a tricky question. It's definitely really um, tricky, but the right answer actually is no difference in nutrition. The, the actual difference between the two really is in the texture and the processing time. Um, let me, uh, I'm sharing the results. Let me click out of it. Um, yeah, so really the nutrients are the same. It's really just how the oat has been processed, but they both come from the same whole grain cereal. Uh, rolled oats are steamed, and then it's actually rolled to produce that signature flat look and allows for a quick cooking time. Steel cut oatmeal actually is less processed, and the oat is sliced two to three times with a steel blade, hence the name steel cut oats, um, to create that more of a chopped, um, rice-like grain texture. It's a little bit chewier um, and traditionally it just takes a lot longer to cook. But the major difference between the two is actually in the texture and the cook time, um, but no change in the nutrition. In the cook time, if you're going to um, use it in the Instapot, I just think that that just makes it a lot easier to use. Um, one um, question, do you mind if I interrupt? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so, um, asking, would you cook gluten-free oatmeal the same way? Yeah, so um, gluten-free oatmeal. So oats are usually considered gluten-free, but um, there could be a little bit of contamination. So generally you do find want to find, if you need to be gluten-free, you do want to make sure that the label says gluten-free, but the oatmeal generally is gluten-free. So the cooking time and the way you cook it is exactly the same. Um, and a tip that I have for you, in case you don't have like the regular steel cut oats, some people actually buy the quick cooking steel cut oats. And you can absolutely use that in the Instapot with just a few modification. You can actually um, put the one cup of oats, so this was the oats in here, you would put in one cup of oats and instead of three cups of the liquid, you would do two and a half cups. And instead of cooking it for four minutes, you see now it has fully pressurized this, this little pin popped up and now you see it says four. It's going to count down until it goes three, two, one. Um, but when you cook it, instead of four minutes, you're gonna do one. And you're gonna allow it to naturally release for 15 minutes instead of 20, because that's what we're doing for the oatmeal right here. Um, I just wanna talk a little bit about toppings, like what kind of toppings you can do with the oatmeal. Um, some very popular ones are just putting nuts on top of your oatmeal. The, the nuts are a great source of protein. You can also do 
chia seeds for some added fiber. Remember I said your goal is maybe five or six grams of fiber um, per meal. The one serving gives you four grams and then one tablespoon of the chia seeds gives you four grams. So you could do maybe a teaspoon or two or even the full tablespoon. The, it can get really messy when you take out the chia seeds. So I actually just put it in a mason jar. Um, my daughter actually likes chia seeds because she gets to play with the mason jar. And I pour the chia seeds in here and I actually have a tiny little spoon. So it just, it just kind of makes it a lot easier to, um, to add the chia seeds in. Otherwise, maybe you don't want to do it because you don't want to get messy. Um, Something else you can do too would be adding cinnamon to the to the mix, or maybe even adding a little bit of peanut butter if you want to have a little bit more of a creamier taste. Very popular with my girls are fruits, so fresh fruits. I put strawberries and blueberries. One tip that I have for you, because you can buy organic strawberries, you can buy just the local regular strawberries there's still a lot of pesticides in there. So my little trick in terms of trying to get as much of the pesticides out, I use baking soda. And, you know, I, this is honestly what I do. It's right here. It's just a little bit of baking soda. The recipe or what it says is one tablespoon of baking soda to one liter of water. I don't even measure it. I just know that. I just keep it in here and I'm adding some water to it right now. Um, so I'm just adding some water in it. I'm going to let it sit for 15 minutes, and that's really going to be the cooking time, right? I let it sit for 15 minutes, and then I'm going to rinse it out, and I'm going to get a lot of the pesticides out. So it just makes me feel a lot more comfortable without always having to buy organic. Um, so I'm going to let it sit right now for that. Something, too, that um, I like to use would be frozen vegetables. Oh, it's not vegetables, it's a fruit. <laughs> Frozen fruits. So I like to use frozen fruits too, especially during this pandemic um, when we just haven't been able to go grocery shopping as much and I didn't know what was available. We always had frozen um, fruits just on hand. If you're going to use frozen fruits, my tip for you is let the oatmeal fully cook. Don't throw it in the pot to cook. You actually want it to be fully cooked. And when it's in the keep warm setting, then you just um, throw in the fruits for like a couple minutes to let it thaw out. And you're gonna have like a really nice texture. If you put it in during the cooking process, it's going to get so mushy and so soft. You probably won't like it. Look right here so the oatmeal is done um but what we're going to do right now <laughs> is it going to stop yes okay we're gonna wait and we're gonna let it wait for 20 minutes you can really actually do 10 minutes 10 to 20 minutes um, for the natural release what we're doing right now is letting the instapot slowly um get rid of its the pressure but during this time it's still cooking so we want to let it naturally release you don't want to um, stop the process right now so we're going to let it um, sit here for maybe another i don't know 10 20 minutes we'll we'll decide what what, what we want to do but what one thing i want to yeah somebody is asking um why you can't do a quick release because they oftentimes use quick release when they're cooking mm -hmm. I use the quick release too, the manual release, and you absolutely can do that um, for other, certain other foods. When it comes to oatmeal or when it comes to something that has a lot of liquid, you still are kind of counting on the, the, the natural release to continue cooking. Um, for the next couple of dishes I'm gonna make, I'm going to do a quick release. But for the oatmeal, or if you're doing like a stew, or if you're doing something with soup, usually you want to let it naturally release because it's still wanting to, to, um, to pressurize and still cooking. Um, that's a good question though, thanks. Um, the other thing I wanted to say too is, you know, you really can use fresh fruits. You can put an apple or pear into the oatmeal to cook. I actually do that because I have a little one-year-old at home who still needs things really soft and mushy. Um, and I just think, great, I don't have to put this on the stove either. So I just make her little steamed apples in the oatmeal too. So, and I just take hers out while the rest of the family um, 
we don't have that soft mushy apple. So if you have anyone at home who can benefit from something really soft and like just has a hard time chewing, you can put in some fresh fruits in here um, to let it cook all the way through and it'll be nice and soft. Okay. Um, next polling question, Leah, I want to ask, um, can you pull up the next one? How many of you have used the timer or delay start button on the Instapot? Okay, to share the results. So 0% um, of you said yes, and 100% of you said um, no, that you have not used the timer delay start button. Yes, I'm gonna teach you something new today. <laughs> so this is my pro tip. This is what you came to this cooking demo for. This is something new, okay? I actually recently learned this and I wish someone had told me about this a long time ago because it's so cool and it's so easy. That timer or start delay button and it just depends on which model you have. I have a little bit of an older model and it's the timer button that I use. It allows you to actually prep your food and delay the cook time for a set amount of time. So if you want to make this oatmeal at night, right, like prep it at night, um, you can actually have it start cooking at seven in the morning. So what I do is, you know, I, I, if let's just say I want to start prepping this at 10 o'clock at night and I want it to start cooking at seven o'clock in the morning, it's kind of like if you had a coffee maker, right? And some people can have a fancy coffee maker and they set their time. So when they wake up, the coffee's already done. Well, this Instapot does it too. And this is the older model. So if you have the new model, cool. Um, but with this, um, all you have to do is put, okay, so I'm actually gonna use the other Instapot. So give me a second. I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab and I don't actually own three Instapot. I'm borrowing it from my family members because it's so much easier to, to show. Plug it in. Okay, so this is what I want to show you. Let me move the camera down again. All right, I think you can see this. Okay, so if you wanted to make this oatmeal recipe and prepare it at night to have it start cooking in the morning, um, let's say it is. I'm gonna do this at 10 o'clock and I want it to start cooking at seven o'clock. What I do is I just put, I'll definitely just put in the oats, I'll put in the liquid exactly the same, no difference. And then the next thing you're going to do, put in the ceiling position too. The next thing you're going to do is put in the cook time for the oats. So in this recipe, remember, we want it to be at four. The next thing you're going to do is press the timer button, okay? Because I want it to cook um, from 10 o'clock to seven o'clock, it's a nine hour difference. So this delays it by nine hours. If you want it to cook at 7.30 and you want to do the minutes, you can actually press the, the timer again and then you can do it by increments of 10 minutes. So this will be nine hours and 30 minutes. You go ahead and just let the, let it sit like this and it's going to beep. Now the green light, can you see this? I'm not sure if this is showing. The green light now is on for the timer. Okay, and this just tells you that the countdown is going is beginning. So in nine hours and 30 minutes, it will start cooking that four minute oatmeal. Okay, so when you see the green light, it looks good. I don't think, I don't know if you can actually see the green light. Maybe the lighting is not so good right here, but that's it. So that was like a game changer for me to do my breakfast. Um, okay.
Let me use this right now. So that's what you came here today for in this cooking show, right? To learn about using the timer method. So I'm actually gonna cancel this because there's actually no food in here. Okay, so right now um, I am going to move on and go ahead and cook the spaghetti squash. Um, another polling question I have. Um, Leah, can you pull up the next polling question? How many of you have cooked or have eaten spaghetti squash before? Okay, Elaine, so 65% of you have cooked or eaten spaghetti squash and 35% of you have not. Okay, so um, maybe the reason could be if you haven't used it before, maybe you don't know how awesome it is, or maybe it just seems really intimidating to cook. The way I used to cook my spaghetti squash was in this lovely oven over here and it would take 45 minutes to an hour long in the Instapot. So it definitely took a long time. And so maybe you don't have the time for that, but I'm gonna show you that it's so easy to do in the Instapot. This vegetable, if you haven't had it before, is very bland and it's a very mild flavor. So it goes really well with a number of seasonings um, and um, different types of sauces. It's very hydrating and it's not as starchy as the other winter squashes like the um, butternut squash or the acorn. And it's also not very sweet in flavor. So it's definitely a good substitute for noodle if you're trying to keep your carbohydrates to a minimum. I like to pair this um, spaghetti squash with a chicken Parmesan, which I'm gonna show you how to do next. Um, but you can also top it with spaghetti sauce, marinara sauce, bolognese sauce, whatever you want. Uh, you can't really substitute it as like um, an Asian noodle soup dish. Doesn't, doesn't work, all right? <laughs> um, so anyways, I like to pick, when you, if you have the six quart, I recommend getting a two pound, um, nothing bigger than that, a two pound um, spaghetti squash. If you have the eight quart, you can go probably up to three pounds so that it just fits much better in there. So what you wanna do first is you're gonna wash the spaghetti squash. I already washed it, all right? And then you wanna cut the squash in half. I already cut it in half, but this is something that's also um, what I recommend. You wanna make sure that when you cut the squash, cut it in half crosswise instead of lengthwise. So you, you don't really wanna cut it this way. When you cut it crosswise, you actually get longer strands so that you actually get longer noodles just because of the circle and the way it is. I also like cutting it this way because it's less dangerous for me. It's less likely to slip um, when I have to cut it. If I cut it this way, it just feels a little bit more dangerous for me. Um, with a spoon, you know, there'll be seeds in here after you cut it. With a spoon, you want to scoop it out, take out the seeds, and if you want, you can actually save the seeds and roast them. But if you're not into that, go ahead and discard it. You're not going to need it for the recipe right here. All right, so now how are we going to steam this? Gonna open the Instapot, put the lid on like this. You are going to need to use a trivet or a steamer insert. This came with your Instapot when you first purchased it. Um, the way you wanna put it is having these four legs down. Put it in here like this. I think you can kind of see. All right, and then for a six quart Instapot, the minimum water that you need to use without it burning when you're steaming is one cup of water. So then I just put in one cup of water right here. And then you put in your two halves of the spaghetti squash. Here's the thing. 
my spaghetti squash was big. It was like three or four pounds. I ordered through Instacart and I just had no control over it. I wanted two pounds and the person who picked it up gave me something so much bigger. So when I cut it, um, I couldn't, I couldn't put, I knew I couldn't put both in. So you can easily just use half. Maybe you're cooking for a small family. <laughs> um, you can easily put in half um, and just cook it that way or get a two pound one. <laughs> Um, what I want to show you right here, though, is that um, when, you, when you're going to want to do, the cooking time is actually going to be seven minutes. So I just press the manual and I wait it to go down to seven right here. Um, for this recipe, I, I think someone had asked, can you do like a manual or quick release? So with this recipe, yes, I don't want you to do, you don't want to do a natural release. You just want to do a quick manual release. Okay, because if you allow it to naturally release, it's going to make your noodles really soft, really tender. And I prefer my texture to be a little bit crunchier um, and to have a little bit of chewiness. Now, the seven minutes is going to give you that texture. If you actually really like soft and um, more tender, you can actually increase the time by one to three minutes. So instead of seven minutes, you can try eight to 10 minutes. Um, how you do a natural release, just wanna show you. So right now, right now the knob is in the ceiling position. Okay, and it obviously hasn't cooked yet, but I'm gonna show you the way I do a natural release. Some, some, um, some people just use their finger and press it from ceiling to venting. I'm so scared that I might burn myself. So I actually just put a towel over here and I either use a spoon, a fork, or just like a big handle from a spatula and push, push it. So it would be in the ceiling position and then I would just press this and then press it to the venting. Um, and then you would hear the little noise and then there will be some steam coming up, but your, um, your towel is gonna catch that right here. And it just feels safer. And I just know that I'm not gonna burn myself. Um, another thing that I want to show you is actually, you know, if you wanna just make this even easier and like skip the cutting process because the cutting, Maybe it just doesn't sound appealing to you, especially if you've never used this before. You can actually cook the whole spaghetti squash without cutting it at all and just put it in your Instant Pot. I would just recommend make sure you wash it all the way, wash it thoroughly, and then you're going to, let me show you. I'm actually gonna turn this off for a moment just so I can show you how this looks. Okay. You still need to have the steamer in here, this trivet, right? But you can actually put the entire, this is two pounds. You can put the entire two pound squash in here. No cutting, don't have to take out the seeds. And then you just close the lid and you're going to cook it on high pressure for 50 minutes instead of seven. So now you're, it's because, you know, you didn't have to do any of the other work. It's going to take 15 minutes for it to be on high pressure. And you do want this one to naturally release for 10 minutes um, instead of doing a quick, a quick release. So you'll cook it for 15 minutes and let it naturally release for 10 minutes. Okay. So I think that this, this recipe is super fast and easy. Um, I want to show you what, what you would do at the end, because You'll do a natural, uh, a quick release. So you would take it out and your spaghetti squash will be cooked. And, you know, for yourself, you, you want to use a fork here, use a fork to feel for the doneness. If you find that the texture feels right for you, then go ahead and start using the fork and you can start um, pulling the strands out. If it's not cooked well enough for you and you want it to be cooked more, so easy. Just put it back in and then you can close it and cook it for another minute or so. I have the done product. <laughs> so this is how the spaghetti squash looks, okay? This is a little bit less than what the half of the squash is right here. 
And um, this has about, for one of the squash that makes about three pounds, um, it has four servings and it has about 16 grams of carbs and three grams of fiber. So remember your goal is getting five or six grams of fiber every time you eat. So this in itself already has three grams of fiber. That was super easy, right? Um, now, the next thing I want to show you how to make is the chicken Parmesan. That's what we're gonna top it off with, um, with the spaghetti squash. So, Elaine? Yeah. Um, quick clarifying question. Somebody is asking, is it 50 minutes or 15 minutes for the whole squash? Oh, one, five. And by the way, um, I have all the recipes. It will be shared with you later. Um, just later on, but um, I'll have all the recipes because I know that maybe it sounds, um, maybe it's hard to hear me, but it's 15, one five. We're not doing 50 minutes, it's just 15. Okay, so next I want to um, show you the chicken Parmesan and let me, let me get this ready for you. Okay, so what you actually will need, you'll need um, two chicken breasts and I cut it in half so they're nice and thin. You'll also need a little bit of oil right here. Let me just make sure. Okay, so let's just make sure you can see this, okay. I'm going to press the saute. So you'll have to do a little bit of work, but I promise you it's less than five minutes. I'm going to press the saute button. I put a little bit of oil on here already. And then the next thing that you're going to do, you're going to put in like two or three garlic cloves. You can have it sliced. I want to do as little work as possible. So I actually um, have them in whole pieces right here. So you can easily just put in the three, two or three garlics, depending on how much you like. Okay. Something else that you're gonna need, about one and a half cups of um, marinara sauce. Um, you can make it yourself or you can buy it yourself, up to you. I'm not judging. This is a little, this is about one and a half cup. I made this the other day. So this is pretty much in half right here. So I'm gonna let the, I'm gonna let the garlic saute for just a little bit. I think you can see it. You're gonna pour, you're gonna pour the sauce in about one and a half cups. Okay. There, you just add a little bit of Parmesan and the, you would just, maybe, if you were measuring it out, it's about two tablespoons. Add a little bit of Parmesan in here. Okay, and you're gonna let this saute for maybe like one or two minutes just so it becomes fragrant. The next thing you're going to do is get your chicken. So I have two chicken breasts here that I slice in half so it's nice and thin. It's about 12 ounces total. You can um, season it just a little bit. Salt is optional. If you don't, um, if you're doing a low sodium diet, you, you can opt out of this. You can also put in some pepper. This. And also some oregano. Um, I'm just showing you how I'm doing it right here like this. But actually when I do it for myself at home, um, I actually don't even season it on the plate, but instead I just throw everything into the pot right here and then I'll just season it on top. So right now it's, um, I smell it, it actually smells really good. I wish you could smell it too. Um, but it has already sauteed, it smells great. Now I'm gonna just put the chicken breast in the pot like so. And I'll show you in just a minute. 
Okay. So you wanna nestle it in nicely. Try not to overlap the chicken breast too much. Let me bring this a little bit closer to you so you can see. And so here's the chicken breast. You're trying not to overlap it too much. And you want to just have a little bit of the tomato sauce on the top to coat it, okay? Like so. And then, what do you do? You just close the Instapot, put it in the ceiling position. We don't want it on venting, put it in the ceiling position. And all we do is now we have to press it off because it was sauteing, remember that? So I'm gonna click on, on the keep warm cancel. And now I'm gonna do a manual for three minutes, only three minutes. So it's going to take three minutes of cook time. I think it takes roughly seven minutes for it to pressurize, three minutes of cook time. And then you want to do a quick release. So when it's done, you would, you would put your, your towel, if you're doing it this way, and just do that quick release that I'm talking about. All right, so now it's cooking, but what I want to show you is what it actually looks like when it's done. And so when it is complete and it's fully cooked, um, I know it's not right now, right? But you would open it and you would actually put in a little bit of mozzarella cheese and just sprinkle it on top, however much you want. And you don't close, you don't lock the lid. You just cover the lid for maybe three minutes. So it allows the cheese to just cook and melt. My family, they actually like to have it a little bit more crispier, the cheese. And so because of that, I just put it in a tray like this, a cooking tray. And then I'm going to put it in the oven. So I'll just sprinkle some cheese on top like so. And then basil's optional, but I think it, it makes it taste a lot better. And then it's going to look like this. And then you just pop it in the oven. Ta-da! I don't have a finished product for you, <laughs> but I just want you to know, you would put it in um, and put on broil, maybe for about two or three minutes, just depending on um, your oven. So you just, um, you just watch it yourself, but you could sprinkle with basil at the end, or you can just do what I just did right now, and it would be done. The entire prep time for this was less than five minutes. I know the, from start to end, when I timed it, it was 11 minutes. Um, done unless you put it in the unless you put it into the oven right here and so that just kind of just depends on what your preference is um, but those are the three recipes that I absolutely love and they're my go-to recipes for my family um, so I hope that inspired some of you who may not have used it before or maybe you if you've if you knew all these recipes before maybe today you learned something new but um, if there's anything else, I'm happy to answer any other questions. Um, yeah, other questions, Elaine. Um, thank you so much for taking us through those three recipes. Um, I did want to create a little plug um, for next month, May 14th, um, from five to six, we have Kathleen Judge, which is She's one of our diabetes educators and um, advanced practice providers. She's going to talk about summer ready and healthy meals, snacks, and drinks. So um, you all can register off the same link if you want to join um, that as well. And you're getting a lot of thank yous, Elaine. And I learned a lot. So thank you so much for your time and your energy and enthusiasm. Great. I actually have one tip, another tip um, for some of you who actually do a lot of like batch cookings too. Um, something I like to do is after, you know, I have my dinner ready and everyone sits down to eat, I actually use, so 
I only own one Instapot. The other ones are my family members just so I could use it today. But the Instapot, when everyone's sitting down to eat, I actually try to start my stew or my soup during dinner time so that by the time dinner's done, dishes are now in the sink, um, the food is done cooking. And I can actually take it out and store it into a different um, container. And I can just wash everything in one go in versus just washing so many different things. But um, I just cook the next meal during my dinner time. And it's just so hands off. So I hope I converted some of you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Elaine. So this concludes our um, evening program and hope that you all are motivated to go use your Instapot and try some of these delicious recipes. Thank you everyone for joining.